Our story today on Mysteries of Superstition Mountain is about an unusual man named Ted Slager. He was born at the turn of the century in 1900, but he was raised in Las Cruces, New Mexico. His family moved to Mesa in 1923, and in uh, 1926, they established a gas station at the corner of Power Road and Main Street in Mesa, which today is a choice piece of property. In 1934, it burnt to the ground and they, uh, they lost everything. But due to a friend, some land was offered to them, to them a couple of miles further east at the corner of Wrecker Road and Main Street. And, uh, but the problem was there was no water anywhere near around there. He had to haul water for everything. So Ted decided to drill a well and he hit 125 degree water. You couldn't put it on a plant, it would kill it. So he established this mineralized water. He established a, a bathhouse and a motel and he had to build cooling towers to bring the water down to a temperature that was a, a, for a human be able to get in it. And, um, those, but those cooling towers are still there to this day. Now, I first met Sliger in 1958 when I came out here after I got out of the service to visit my dad. We were living a little less than a mile from Buckhorn and there was a lady there that uh, had a horse in a corral across the road and she never rode it, but she did know that it needed exercise. So I rode that horse everywhere. And I used to ride down to Buckhorn, and I actually helped Ted Slager on a couple of minor things, but that was my first association with Buckhorn. Well, in 1940, well, about that time that they drilled this well, he married Alice. And Alice was totally responsible for contacting the San Francisco Giant baseball team, which later became the San Francisco Giants. And they moved their operations, spring training from Casa Grande to Buckhorn. And these guys are Ty Cobb, Willie Mays, Ernie Banks, Gaylord Perry, all the big stars of the old times was, was living there and taking baths at the Buckhorn. Then in 1949, a friend of uh, Ted's uh, by the name of Alfred Lewis purchased Goldfield Ghost Town before it was a ghost town. And he, he was tearing the place down and selling the lumber off and selling the machinery that was left behind. And it doesn't quite explain how it happened, but there was a huge boulder that he had to move and when he moved that boulder, it opened up an entrance to an old mine tunnel. Well, he immediately came to Ted and Slager and Nichols, Shumway and Lewis all formed a mining operation and they removed $50,000 out of the old mammoth mine, near the old mammoth mine in 1949 until they tunneled into a more modern drift and they lost sight of the uh, of the vein but that's another story our story today deals specifically with the fact that in 1999 well ted died in 1984 and in 1999 alice closed the place down and um, I was driving by there in 2007, and for the first time, I saw a for sale sign. Well, that piqued my attention. So what I got through with whatever I was doing that day, I stopped back by and asked to see Alice. There was still a lady working there, and um, she said Alice was up at Lakewood for the summer. And uh, I asked if there was any way I could contact her. And she says, well, are you interested in buying the place? I said, well, no, I couldn't do that, but I am interested in what happens to the animals in the museum. You see, Ted was a 
a taxidermist, and he was a good taxidermist. And he had over 500 specimens of Arizona animals and birds and reptiles in his museum. People that he knew would bring him animals that they had taken and give him the skins and he, he would process them. He had a very unusual way of doing that too because one time I talked to Alice out of a, a Gila monster for our museum and uh, she told me that Ted always treated his animals with arsenic and no bug would dare attack it. <laughs> well, this the, the lady finally gave me Alice's phone number and this started a two-year saga on an attempt to get the animals donated to the Superstition Mountain Museum. So I called Alice, we talked for a while and she hadn't thought much about what she was going to do with it. And uh, so we hung up on the statement that I made that, well, Alice, whatever we do, whatever you do with those animals, that collection has got to stay together. And I know that struck a, a place in her heart. And a couple of weeks later, she called the museum and told them that she had decided to, to donate them to us. Well, Time goes on and we had several meetings. The board, I kind of think, made a mistake at that time. And, and let, me t let me explain that that board is no longer involved. It's a whole new board up there. So don't go blaming the museum for this. Um, they wanted Alice to put the money up to build a building to put the animals in. And she quit talking to us. <laughs> The board in one meeting had just virtually gave up. And I, I stood up and I said, look, you had your shot, now let me do it. Well, her 100th birthday came around, which I think was in 2007. And uh, we went, I went to her birthday party and Jack Sanfelice went with me. And the lady in charge of the, of the party uh, was giving an address up front. I think it was her niece, but I'm not sure. It, it was somebody that was related to her. And Jack took me up and introduced me to her and told her my name and uh, that I was with the Superstition Mountain Museum. And she says, oh, you're the people that want the Alice, the animals, and you want Alice to pay for the building. I said, no, ma'am, uh, that's, that's out of the question anymore. He says, we're gonna raise the money but I can't do that unless we know, we have some document that we're gonna get those animals. We can't go around raising money on the outside chance that we wouldn't get them. What do you do with the money then? <laughs> so she said, well, you tell me what you want and I'll get Alice to sign it. And sh sure enough, Alice and her lawyer notarized a statement and the intent to give us the animals and any other thing she might decide to give us because there was a lot of other stuff around her besides animals. Well, two years goes by. Alice must have been pretty sure she was going to do it because she built a house across the street from the museum so she could be close to her animals. But we had a guy on the board that um, he didn't like dead animals. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> and uh, it got pretty sticky for a while and I got disgusted and I resigned from the museum over this issue and it all fell through. The animals were evidently donated to ASU and they have piecemealed the whole thing out to anybody that wanted them. And I feel very badly about how that all came about. Well, I wanted to tell you this story because uh, Buckhorn is an integral part of the community out here and it has been sold. Uh, I read a story about it a, a year or two ago and I think it was involved some relatives and the place had been pretty well condemned by the city of Mesa. So it's gonna take a lot of work to uh, put it back in operation. But the intent I believe is to reopen the well and uh, and make it a bathhouse again. And uh, of 
course, the animals are gone, but uh, this, this still would be a tremendous asset to the community. And uh, I've got another story to tell you about Ted that's really unusual. And that's the story for the next time. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.